but there are, you know, there are significant advantages. Good morning, everyone. Great to see you all. It's good uh, for me to be back. My name is Megan. I'm the Lighthouse Kids Director, so I've missed seeing you all. I've been uh, somewhat out for uh, two months. I, I just gave birth to my little girl, Aviana. She'll be joining later. Um, but it's just wonderful to be back. It's great to see the kids. We're going to have a wonderful service upstairs today. Uh, we're going to be getting into uh, learning about how to be wise. And we have a wonderful, powerful parable to go along with that. So uh, I'm just going to open us up in prayer, and then the kids will go upstairs with me. God, we thank you that you are here, that you are ready to work powerfully in our lives, God, that you are the foundation that we can rely on. God, we're going to be learning about that in new ways, but God, may we not just learn about it, may it transform our hearts, may it change our lives, that we can know that you are the foundation that we can always turn to and build our lives on, God. I thank you for this opportunity that we can be together fellowshipping. May you be glorified in it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Good morning, church. Good morning. Excited to worship with you guys. And uh, on that note, we're going to sing a song called Joy. Yeah. 
there is a QR code in the bulletin, so you can use the technological advances to have a hard disposal to uh, address that. Now, the question is, Lord, please bless these offerings. Please bless our tithes and offerings. If they go to the Creator, to your to your glory. ever mindful that it is our labors that we owe to you that we, and that we are blessed by you in Jesus name Amen
we hook them up with attorneys, we hook them up with uh, services, with whatever it is that they need, we hook them up with it so that they can make that decision to leave. Some women, it takes longer than others. We've had some women come to us or call us two or three times or four times before they actually make that decision to leave. And we've had women who are just up to here, they're tired, that's it, I'm gone, I'm out of here. And we have them with whatever they need. We do a lot of restraining orders, unfortunately. But it is part of that process. We also help women with uh, supervised visits. Uh, mainly it's men that have the supervised visits. But we also get women who uh, have supervised visits. Because of whatever the situation was. We also help with parenting classes to help women and men become better parents. And uh, the, the program that we use is called Love and Logic. Love and Logic, such a practical, no yelling at your kids, from toddler all the way through high school. The techniques and the tools that are taught are just very practical on how to deal with those parenting issues that come along and you're like, oh my gosh, tear my hair out. But the, the practicalness of Love and Logic, I, I just love. So we, we give them the tools. We give them what they need to be able to leave that situation. To be able to have the life that they desire to have. Because when I left my abusive relationship, I will never forget I was deciding, do I stay, do I leave, do I stay, do I leave? I would take off my wedding ring and I would put it back on. I would take it off and I would put it back on. Because I didn't know what to do. And I'll never forget the day God came to me and he said, look, you don't leave, you're going to die. And if you don't die physically, you're going to die spiritually. But if you take my hand and walk with me, I will give you more than you can ever imagine. That day forward, I was like, no, it took me a, not even a second. I was like, okay, let's go. And from that moment forward, he brought the people in my life to help me leave. He brought me an attorney. Uh, he brought me whatever I needed so that I could leave. And I, I never regret that day because now it's my job, my call, to help other women come out of that situation. So it's an honor for me to do what God has asked me to do. And I've learned a lot. I've fallen down and I've gotten back up. I've made mistakes. I've gone, Lord, I can't do this. And he says, keep on going. We've had lean months and we've had good months. And now God has brought me to a place of, you know what, you're going to be okay. He's prospering us. We're growing. And I love to invite the women here. And uh, I'll read some of my business cards. In October, we're going to have an all-women black dress fundraiser. So it's your opportunity to wear that little black dress hanging in your closet. <laughs> it's going to be for women only. Sorry, men. But it, it's going to be a lot of fun. So I invite you to come because we're raising money so that I can continue helping women come out of that situation. And, you know, whether it's helping them with getting an attorney, whether it's helping them with paying court fees, whether it's helping them pay the process server, whatever it may be, we want to be able to help the women with, with their needs. So that's what God's Heart Ministry is all about. If you'd like to know more, like I say, I'll leave my business cards, and you can um, reach out to me and find out more information. So Lord, we pray for Anna, and we pray for God's heart ministry, that uh, you would use her to, uh, to minister to those who are hurting in our community. We pray, we're grateful for the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, there's always hope. Uh, we pray for the marriages in our community, that they would be strong, men would learn to love their wives, women would learn to love, to love and respect their husbands. So uh, help us, Lord go forward with the good news of Jesus Christ in all aspects of life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I hope you got your Bibles open. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, uh, verses 24 to 29. Uh, on uh, March 11, 
2011, there was a terrible earthquake uh, 50 miles off the coast of uh, eastern Japan. Uh, it measured 9.0 on the Richter scale, and it triggered a massive tsunami that quickly uh, made its way to the Japanese coastline. Waves up to 130 feet high. Could you imagine that? The tsunami was so devastating, it killed more than 18,000 people. It uh, brought about $360 billion worth of damage uh, to the infrastructure along the eastern shoreline of, uh, of, of Japan. In fact, Chris, our brother Chris, was there on the USS Ronald Reagan. He was one of the first responders uh, to that crisis. But it wiped out roads. It wiped out uh, bridges, it wiped out rail railroad lines, it uh, destroyed, completely destroyed 125,000 homes, uh, it wiped out uh, 250,000 automobiles, uh, the uh, nuclear reactors, there were four nuclear reactors at Fukushima, and they, all of them suffered a complete meltdown. Radiation was released into the atmosphere. It's still going to be uh, decades before those reactors are, are back online. 4.4 million people were left without power. Uh, 1.5 million people had no potable water to drink. And four years after the event, there were still 250,000 people uh, displaced from their homes. There was, a, as inspectors uh, took a look at the site, uh, they noticed there were some stone markers high along the uh, coastline of, of eastern Japan. And some of those markers had been there for hundreds of years. And they were called tsunami stones. And there was a little village that survived the tsunami the name of the village was Aniyoshi, Japan. And they heeded the, the words that were on those ancient tsunami stones. Here's what the words said. Do not build any homes below this point. High dwellings are the peace and harmony of our descendants. Remember the calamity of the great tsunamis. See, these things have happened before. Those tsunami stones were there to warn, not build below those lines. And uh, the citizens of Aneyoshi, Japan, heeded the warnings and survived when the, when the terrible storms hit. So in our text today, uh, Jesus uh, gives us a warning. He says he, he's, he's finishing up the Sermon on the Mount which we've looked at this summer. And uh, as he concludes it, he gives us a, one of his parables. And he says, uh, he says, whoever hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like the wise man that builds his house on the rock. When the rains fall and when the streams beat against that house and when the wind blows, the house is going to stand because it's built on a firm foundation. But the foolish man is the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice. He builds his house on sandy ground, and when the, when the rains fall, and when the winds blow, and uh, when, when the rivers beat against that house, it collapses with a loud crash. So Jesus tells this parable at the end of this magnificent sermon, this sermon that we've looked at all summer long, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, the greatest sermon ever delivered. And let me, let me just refresh your minds a little bit, what, what we've covered this summer. Uh, the Sermon on the Mount opens with the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. You know, blessed are those who recognize they don't have it all together. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Do you still remember this one? You know, blessed, uh, blessed are those who mourn. They will be comforted. Blessed are the meek they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, 
they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. And then Jesus says, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for in such a way they persecuted of the prophets who went before you. As Jesus continues the Sermon on the Mount, he says, I didn't come to destroy the laws that Moses gave you. I didn't come to destroy uh, the Ten Commandments. I came to fulfill them. You know, a long time ago it was written, Thou shalt not murder. But I tell you, you got to work on that anger problem in your life. It was written a long time ago, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I tell you, you got to deal with that lust problem you got in your heart. It was written a long time ago, keep the oaths that you take. But I tell you, you don't even need to take an oath. Be a man or be a woman of your word. When you say yes, mean it. When you say no, mean it. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Or at least give a phone call if you can't make it. You know, let, your, let your yes be yes, your no be no. Uh, Jesus said uh, when you're, you don't need to be showing off your piety. You know, you can do your fasting, and you can do your prayer, and you can do your giving in secret. Then your Heavenly Father, who sees what you do in secret, will reward you openly. Uh, Jesus said, don't be worried. Don't be worried about the struggles of this life. God's still on the throne. Jesus says, don't be judging people. you got enough log jams in your own eye before you worry about taking a speck out of your neighbor's eye. And Jesus said, if you... Uh, Say you love God, well, let's see some fruit that proves it. And uh, kind of, he summarizes the whole Sermon on the Mount with the golden rule. And the golden rule is not he who has the gold rules. The golden rule is, what is it? It's do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Treat others with dignity and with respect. And so that's the Sermon on the Mount in a very abbreviated version, but then Jesus says, whoever hears those words and puts them into practice is wise, and that house is going to stand when the tsunamis of life come. So this morning I'm going to look at three things. I'm going to look at, uh, there's storms, there's going to be storms in our lives. Number two, uh, I'm going to talk about placing your faith in Jesus and trusting him is going to enable you to stand when those storms come. And number three, if you're placing your faith in something else, it may look good for a while, but ultimately it will come crashing to the ground. So there are storms in life. Has anybody noticed that? You know, can I get an amen on that? There's some storms that are coming your way. I like the... Uh, rock and roll band Creedence Clearwater Revival. Uh, they had one song that says, Long as I remember, the rain's been coming down. Clouds of mystery, pouring confusion on the ground. Good men through the ages trying to find the sun. And I wonder, still I wonder, who stopped the rain? The rain's going to keep coming. The storm's going to keep coming. You know, this past summer, we've seen flash floods closed down national parks in, in Moab National Park and Zion National Park. Uh, we've seen highways uh, covered with floodwaters in Colorado. We've seen automobiles covered with water in Texas. Uh, Carlsbad Caverns had tourists trapped in there because of flash floods and believe it or not, even in Death Valley where it never rains. Flash floods stranded thousands of people in, in Death Valley. Storms come, storms happen. And I don't think the storms that Jesus was talking about in this parable were these kinds of storms. I think he was talking about storms that come to us personally. We all face physical storms. We struggle with our health. Uh, many of us have great health problems that kind of suck away the joy of life. You know, we have uh, emotional storms that, that come our way. Some of us uh, are worried all the time about financial issues, or some of us have addictions, or, uh, or, or uh, some of us may deal with depression, you know, these kinds of emotional storms. 
We have relational storms. Why can't I get along with my wife? Why can't I get along with my husband? Why are my kids gone wild on me? Why can't I find a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Why are my friends running away from me? You know, we all face these kinds of storms. In fact, Jesus talked about the storms in another place. He said, in the world, you're going to have trouble. Amen? In the world, you're going to have trouble, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I love what the prophet uh, Job says. Uh, Job says, um, trouble comes to man as sparks fly upward. And then there's the apostle Paul. Uh, I wouldn't have wanted to travel with that guy. <laughs> he went into the city of Lystra, in one of his, it's in Turkey. He went into the city of Lystra preaching the gospel. The people didn't like what they heard. They picked up stones and, and, and they thought they killed him. And they drug him outside of the city. And they didn't kill him. He woke up from the coma he was in. And the next day he goes back into the city and starts <laughs> preaching again. I wouldn't want to travel with that guy. But one of the things he said was it's through much tribulation that we entered the kingdom of God. You know, trouble. There's, there's trouble. There's storms. I love the uh, great uh, novel written by Herman Melville, the great American novel, Moby Dick, you know, and, and one of the opening lines in Moby Dick, he says, men everywhere are enveloped in whale lives. There's, there's just trouble everywhere you turn. You know, if um, you may be just coming out of a storm right now, or you may be in a storm right now, or you may be heading for a storm, but storms happen. Rains are going to fall on your parade. Winds are going to blow. You know, the river's going to beat up against the foundation of your life, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. So, what do you do? How do you deal with those storms? So, verse 24, Jesus says, it's the wise man uh, who builds his house on the rock. Whoever hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, is the one who's going to stand through the trials and the storms of life. Uh, Christ is that rock. Jesus is the rock of our salvation. And when we close today, Matt's going to lead us in, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sin. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, say that with me, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. You know, 700 years before Jesus came to this world, Isaiah the prophet in Isaiah 28 says, uh, God says, I have laid a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, and the one who believes will be unshakable Amen. when the tsunamis come. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, Paul the Apostle, he says, you are no longer, he's talking to Christians, he says, you are no longer foreigners or strangers, but you are fellow citizens with God's people and are members of his household built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Jesus Christ is the rock of our salvation and when you trust him, uh, you're, you're building your life on a solid foundation. There is no other name given on, uh, under heaven among men than that of Jesus of Nazareth. Believe on him and you'll be saved. Believe on him and you'll be building a house uh, on a foundation that will endure the storms. And in addition to focusing on the fact that Jesus is the foundation, he's the rock, uh, verse 24 also says we need, to, we need to do the things that he says. Whoever hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, that's the one who's the wise man. If you've got an anger problem, you've got to work on that anger. If you've got a lust problem, you've got to work on that lust. If you've got a problem keeping your word, you've got to learn to keep your word. If you've got a problem criticizing and judging people, you've got to work on that. You know, that's, uh, you've got to put those things into practice as you build on that foundation, which is Christ. 
uh, James the Apostle says, be doers of the word, not hearers only, uh, deceiving yourself. And, but, uh, you know, Americans like quick fixes. We like, uh, we like houses to go up quickly. But it takes a long time uh, to build a house. Uh, any of you ever watched that TV show, This Old House? You know, I used to, I used to repair houses back in the day when I was going to seminary and made a lot of money fixing people's houses. And I never, had, never knew how to do anything, but I watched This Old House and I learned how to, learned how to make repairs to homes. But they have a website, and on the website it says a good foundation requires a lot more than digging a hole and pouring some concrete into forms. It must be tailored to its site, like a custom suit, taking into account soil conditions, water tables, the quality of the backfill, and as with a custom suit, every detail must be perfect. The base properly compacted, the formwork set up right, the concrete free of voids. Neglect even one of these, and the most carefully poured foundation can fail. Fortunately, from the beginning of time, God has laid that foundation, which is Christ. And all he's asking us to do is believe and trust and build our house on that foundation, which is, which is Christ. And we're going to make mistakes. You know, as we, as we build our house, the doors may stick, the toilet may not flush, the roof may leak here and there. But if, if the house is on a firm foundation, you can, you can recover from all those minor things and, and restore it to its glory. You know, and it never, it never stops repairing a home. We bought our house in Escondido uh, eight years ago, and I've put countless hours in it, and my wife put countless hours in it, and it, it just never ends. I mean, Jackie's got this endless list of to-do things for me to do on this house, and it grows every day. And it's like every day there's always something to do. But that's what a good house is. You gotta, you gotta invest in it. You gotta put some time and effort and energy into it, and it's gonna be look, it's gonna be looking good. You get it out of foundation, and then you, you you keep working on it and keep tweaking it. And it's the same with our spiritual lives. You're never there. You're always building on your spiritual life. You need to be in God's Word every day. You know, to, to grow strong, you build that spiritual house every day. You need to you need to come and worship every Sunday as you were here today. Give cheerfully to the work of God's kingdom. Give your time, give your talents, get plugged into a small group. Iron sharpens iron, and you can grow with other brothers and sisters, and you can help other brothers and sisters out in their in their in their struggles. Hope you're here next week. Graham mentioned it. One service next week. We're going to meet inside and outside. Overflow crowds. And uh, we're going to, all our small group leaders are going to share, uh, you know, their small group and their vision for the coming year. And you can, you can hear where we're going and what we hope to do in the coming year. And I, I hope you jump in and, and give, give, God, uh, give God your best because you want to build a good spiritual house as well as a, as well as a good physical house uh, that, you, that you live in. And when the storms of life come, you'll have, you'll stand, the house will stand. But the foolish man uh, builds um, his house on sand. Uh, the foolish man is one who knows about the rock, who knows about Christ, but refuses to build on it. You know, we don't need to prove the existence of God to anybody. God is imprinted on the heart of every single human being who is created in his image. And even if we're dealing with people that have never, never read God's word, God's word is still on their heart. It's not a matter of intellect. It's a matter of the will. Do you want to follow God or do you turn your back on God? And so uh, there are people who know about the rock, who know about Christ, but refuse to follow him. Paul the Apostle is real clear on this. In Romans chapter 1, verse 20, he says, God's eternal qualities, his, uh, his, his power and his divine nature are made evident to everyone. 
and no one is without excuse. Or in Psalm, Psalm 19, a beautiful psalm, we read the following words, the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. You know, I love looking at the beauty of creation around us. It's declaring God's glory. Day after day, they pour forth their speech. It might be a wind that slams a door. It might be the bright stars that twinkle at night. Or it might be a cracking thunderstorm. We need one of those pretty soon. Not during our baptism this afternoon, but maybe, maybe sometime later. But day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth their words to the ends of the world. The heavens, the, God's creation declares his glory. It's written on our hearts. We don't need to prove the existence of God to anyone. It's, it's a matter of the will. But it's, uh, Americans again, like quick fixes. And it's, uh, it's easy to build a house on sand. It's hard to follow Christ. It's easy to build uh, quickly and make something that looks pretty nice, but won't stand uh, the ravages of time. There were uh, 18.6 million uh, self-help books sold just last year in the United States. And I don't have anything against self-help books. You know, they can they can give us some guidance. You know, how to how to keep your marriage strong, how to how to win the heart of this beautiful woman or this handsome man, or how to make a lot of money or how to raise my kids, and all, how to win friends and influence people. There's all these, all these kinds of self-help books, um, and they can give us some good advice. But many people who read the self-help books never open up this book, you know, which, which will really transform your life. You know, the, the self-help books, without the power of God behind it, can be just a band-aid, you know, just a surface, uh, a surface solution. Whereas God word, God's word goes right to the heart, and it's it's transformative. So uh, it's it's easy to build on sand. You know, you can uh, rely on your bank account. You can rely on your church. Breakwater Church is not going to save you. Uh, the foundation is Christ. Uh, you know, you can you can rely on many different things. Political parties and all all this and that. They won't. That's not a firm foundation. It's a quick fix often, but it won't, it won't save your soul. Uh, Jesus uh, said, uh, narrow is the gate. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a hard walk. Narrow is the gate that leads to life, but broad is the way. Easy is the way that leads to destruction. Or in another, another place, he says, die to yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. So it's, uh, it takes some time. It takes some effort uh, to build uh, to build a good house. Uh, many of you may remember uh, this event back in 2007 in uh, La Jolla, uh, just down the road. Uh, there was a stretch of uh, highway, 200 feet stretch of highway that collapsed, and uh, there were two multi-million dollar houses uh, completely destroyed, washed right down in the ocean. And there were another another 17 homes that were uh, rendered uninhabitable, and uh, you know the, there was power lines knocked down, and gas leaks, and uh, finally they did the final inspection. And it was a man named Pat Abbott, who was a retired uh, geological science professor at San Diego State University, and he said the fundamental fault is these houses were built on a bad site. Do they look good? You know, those houses on the cliffs there in La Jolla look good, but if the foundation isn't right, they came collapsing down into the ocean. You know, and, and many people's lives look that way. You know, they look really good on the surface, but there's no substance. There's, there's nothing there. Um, so, um, take up the cross. Follow Jesus. Build your, build your foundation uh, on the rock. So when Jesus finished this message, uh, the, the, crowds, the crowds were amazed. He came down from the mountain. Who is this man that speaks with such authority? It was written long ago, but I tell you, who is this guy? 
And I, I love the old Christmas carol that says, This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste, bring him laud, the babe, the son of Mary. This is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, who came down from that mountain and uh, offered these teachings to, to, the, to his disciples. Uh, this, was, this was Jesus, the Son of God, who later went to the cross and died for our sins and rose from the dead and destroyed the power, the power hold, the grip that sin and death and hell has on our lives. This is the King of Kings who delivered those words. This is the Lord of Lords. This is the author and the finisher of our faith. Do you know him? Do you love him? Is he your God? Is he your king? Uh, he is the light of the world. He is the bread of life. He is the gate of the sheepfold. He is the good shepherd. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the vine. You are the branches. Do you know him? Do you love him? He's a um, man. He's the king. And he, he, he loves you. And he laid his life down for you. And so I, you may be building a bungalow. You may be building the stick house. You may be building the ranch house. You may be building the Cape Cod house. You may be building the split level house. You may be building the three story Victorian house with the copper gutters and downspouts and slate roofs. You may be building the castle. You know, you may have a kingdom all around you. I don't care what kind of house you're building, but I do hope you're building it on the foundation which is Jesus Christ. Whoever hears these words of mine and, and puts them into practice is like the wise man who builds his house on the rock and when the storms of life come, nothing's going to shake that house. Nothing's going to knock it down. You know, we can learn a lot from cartoons, can't we? Remember as a little kid, you remember the three little pigs? Remember the big bad wolf? And he says, little pig, little pig, let me in, let me in. And, and what did the little pig say? Not by the hair of my chitty chin chin. And then, the, and then the big bad wolf says, storms are coming. Storms are coming, there's a tsunami coming. I'm going to huff and I'm going to puff and I'm going to blow your house down. And the, the little piggy that lived in the straw house, his, his house got blown away. And the little piggy that had the stick house, his house got blown away. Whose house was it that stood? The, the house that was brick or stone. You know, so we learn a lot, even from the three little pigs. So build your house on the rock. Love the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, come to church every Sunday. Worship him. Read his word. Grow strong in the faith. And uh, you'll stand when the trials of life come. Amen? Amen. So I worked up a sweat. You sweat out there? <laughs> any, uh, any thoughts? Any comments? Insights? Y'all good? Hot? Good to go home? <laughs> All right, let's pray. All right, Heavenly Father, thank you for, thank you for your word. Thank you for your son. Thank you for the church. Help us, Lord, to be faithful in building our lives on the rock. Help us to not be discouraged when the windows may not shut properly, when the faucet drips, when the floorboards creak, but help us to persevere. We're not looking for quick fixes. We're looking for eternal fixes. So help us, Lord. Fill us with your spirit. Draw us close to you. Help us to build on the foundation and help us to build in such ways that it honors you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand to our feet. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. I think he's forgotten. Maybe we're going to do it later. I'm going to take a photo. My hope is built on nothing. Better.
Jesus took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, This cup is the new covenant that has been sealed in my blood. And he says, As often as you drink of it, uh, drink it in my memory. Uh, Pastor Tom, would you pray for the cup? Uh, Heavenly Father, you are our rock. You took your stand at Calvary. You planted the cross there. You bled and died for us there. Your precious blood covered our sins from the past to the present and to the future. She rose again from the dead, indicating that you will bring us back home with you when it's time. Father, we thank you for your precious blood. We thank you, Father, that you shed it just for each and every one of us sitting in this arena. And we thank you, Father, for what you have done for us and what you continue to do for us in our lives. Thank you. In your son's name, Jesus. Shall we drink together?
refreshments outside, and I hope to see you at the baptism on 1, 1 p.m. down at the Tyson Park Beach. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.